Wednesday, this is Jamie from Stonemeyer Games, and I'm here as usual on Wednesday to answer your questions, to share some Stonemeyer Games news, and to uh, discuss some random topics. Um, there's a couple things that we can talk about today. Uh, let's start off with a nesting box and Wingspan Asia ship out update. Um, so we said in our order confirmation emails that it's going to take a few weeks to get through this. Film centers take, uh, you know, they're, they're human people who are working through these these ship, these uh, these orders, and they got a lot of pre-orders last week. I don't know the exact number. You know, it's around 10,000 orders for the nesting box, and then um, another, I think it was around 5,000 orders of, of Wingspan Asia. And so it's a lot of orders for them to ship out. They're working on it, and uh, all champion orders should be shipped out by the end of next week, maybe a little bit earlier in your region. We'll see. When your order ships, you'll get a shipping notification. And if your order, uh, if you are a non-champion, that's great too. Your order will ship after that. Uh, Thanksgiving week might be a little bit precarious here in St. Louis uh, or here in the U.S., but maybe the fulfillment center will be able to get everything through before then. But that is definitely the biggest region for shipouts. Other regions, uh, Canada, Australia, and Europe, don't celebrate Thanksgiving the week that we do, so um, they uh, they should continue to ship that week to to non-champions. So that is the, the current ship out notice. Uh, you probably have seen some people saying, hey, I got my shipping notification. I've already got my box. And that's true. Some people's orders will be shipped first and other people's orders will be shipped uh, not first <laughs> because they can't ship everything at once on the same day. So I appreciate your patience. And when your order ships, you will get a tracking notification. Um, I'll come back to one other important piece of nesting box news in a, in, a, in a minute. I just want to say hi to some people, Tim, Tony, Chris, uh, Chad. Uh, Rick says that he did get his nesting box this weekend, and his kiddos were having fun with it. And Dave is excited to get the Wingspan expansion under his Christmas tree this year. Uh, Jonathan, Mark, Melissa. Melissa got hers. Uh, made it here before an another storm hits. There's another storm heading for Florida. Um, Kevin says his shipping was delayed. Is that a courier issue, Kevin, or a, or a fulfillment center issue? Probably a courier issue, but hopefully it's not delayed by much at all. Um, a lot of people are saying they got their nesting box. I'm glad to see here that some people are getting next nesting boxes. We are definitely getting shipping confirmations from all four regions now. So um, that's that's great news. The other news is if you're watching this and maybe you're a little frustrated that you didn't get a nesting box in the first printing, we already had a reprint in the works. This was a reprint that we were working on with our localization partners, and we added a few thousand copies uh, of, of the nesting box to this reprint a few months ago when it started. Um, just for us. This is a version of the nesting box without Wingspan Asia inside. And I believe we are on track for today, probably early this afternoon, Central Time, St. Louis Time. We are going to put that nesting box, um, that reprint, which should arrive in early 2023. Um, we're going to put that on our web store for pre-order. So this will be more of a traditional pre-order where you are ordering something a few months before it actually arrives. But that way, you know, you can you, you're guaranteed to get it. We've already made it. We know it's on the way soon and uh, and you will get it. Uh, again, this is a version of the nesting box without Wingspan Asia. It's pre-packaged and it'll ship by itself. So you can't add anything else to that order. It's just one nesting box for this pre-order. If you want a notification about this, um, please sign up for a back in stock notification and we should send out that email later this afternoon. Also, feel free to just check our website later this afternoon in a few hours um, if you're watching this live on Wednesday. So that is on, on track. The th third step to this is if slash when we sell out of that reprint, because there is a finite number of copies, we've already started making them, so it's, it's finite, uh, we will send out, we, we will do one more pre-order for a third printing. Same thing, nesting box without Wingspan Asia, um, and that one will be will arrive in around six months. So that's one that we would we would print to order. We would base it off of the actual orders that we've received, plus an additional orders for those who want to wait until it arrives to uh, to to order it. Um, so if you miss out on this first reprint, the second printing of the nesting box, you can get in on that that future reprint later. Carl says that he's actually setting up his nesting box right now. Um, Kenneth says, does it mean that it will hit retailers or is it a Stillmire Games exclusive? We don't do exclusives in any form, but it might sound a little bit like that. This, we, there are certain products that we make where we can't offer them with, uh, at a reasonable price uh, to retailers or, or through retailers. And the nesting box is one of those products. It is, uh, with the markup, especially due to freight shipping, it would be incredibly expensive um, for a, a retailer to sell it um, and for us also to sell it to a retailer. 
However, freight shipping is changing. It's getting a little bit more cost effective. So it is possible that one of these future printings of the nesting box, um, not the second printing, but maybe the third printing, if freight shipping continues to go down, it is possible uh, that it will work for us retailers and customers for us to sell, sell some copies to retailers. <clears throat> so it is possible. I, I can't say for sure yet, but it is possible that will happen in the future, starting with a third printing, maybe. We will see about that. Corey from Blue Falcon Board Gaming says, did you get the chance to take a look at Hike It and Skeptics that was mentioned last week? I did look at those campaigns, uh, uh, Corey, and they look the, the Hike It map looks really beautiful. Um, and Skeptics, I don't know if Skeptics was a great fit for me, but it was an interesting game to look into and learn about. So thank you for recommending both of those games to look into. Michael is asking for updates about the third Tapster expansion. So far, the only updates that we're really providing are the updates on the progress chart on our website. You can see uh, what the, the status of that project is at that point. We'll start talking about it uh, once it actually arrives at our fulfillment centers. Nathan says that he's been playing a lot of Rolling Realms and Wingspan the last few weeks, and he tried Smitten with his son. Thanks for playing those Stillmeyer games, Nathan. Uh, Tom says, any news on new Rolling Realms realms? Um, it'll either be December or January, I think. There's uh, uh, There are a few factors that I'm trying to figure out uh, as to the, the exact timing of when I'll release the next batch of three Rolling Realms promos. Um, it depends on if we are going to offer certain other things for order or pre-order in December. If we do, then I'll do it in January. We're very flexible on these. That's what's nice about these promos. Uh, as we have more and more arriving, we have a lot of flexibility as to exactly when we release them. So maybe in early December, maybe in early January. We'll see how that, that's going. Chad asked how my cat Biddy is doing. Biddy is actually doing great. And Walter, today is Walter's 13th birthday. He's not around here to celebrate with us, but Walter turned 13 today. So I have two cats. I got uh, Biddy as a kitten. I got Walter as a rescue. And Walter's age and birth date are pretty much just an estimate. But um, from my count for the last 10 or so years, I think he's around 13 years old. So we're celebrating Walter's birthday today. Uh, we got some cupcakes that he can't eat, but we're going to enjoy them. And we're giving him some catnip uh, treats throughout the day to keep him entertained. And we pulled out some of his favorite toys to celebrate with him today. And we'll give him extra cuddles as well. Um, Ivan says, have I tried any of the expansions for Dune Imperium? I have played The Rise of Ix. That's the one that Ivan mentions here in the comments. I own it. I have it. I really, really enjoy it. There's another expansion coming out um, that I'm intrigued by, but I still feel like I have so much to explore in Dune Imperium itself and with that expansion that I, I can't say at this time that I'm itching for another expansion, but the reviews for it make it look awesome. So I am a little curious about it. We'll see if I delve into that. I have a, a Clank Catacombs on pre-order from Direwolf, um, and so I'm kind of more excited about having that arrive. I have no idea when that will arrive, but I pre-ordered it a few months ago, and I'm excited about it. Mark says, if Wingspan gets another expansion, will you be considering boxing that new expansion inside a nesting box for those who haven't gotten the nesting box with Wingspan Asia, or the nesting box without Wingspan Asia? Mark, that is a consideration. We discovered, so here's the, the, the caveat with that. Um, we discovered with the Wingspan Asia combination with the nesting box that it was kind of confusing for some people a little bit because really Wingspan Asia has nothing to do with the nesting box other than being a Wingspan thing that can be packed inside of it. And so people already are associating the two even though they're really, other than the, the two first printings of those products aligning, they really have no connection. They are completely separate products. And maybe from the start, we should have separated them so there wasn't any confusion about that. Uh, the other factor there is we there were a number of people who ordered the nesting box not realizing that Wingspan Asia was in the box. And so they ordered the nesting box and Wingspan Asia, and it resulted in a ton of customer service for Joe to handle last week. Uh, even though, I mean, this is something that's clearly in the product label for the, the original nesting box. It said that the product name was Wingspan Nesting Box with Wingspan Asia, uh, but people still I mean, I'm talking hundreds of people still ordered both without realizing it. And they went back to Joe and said, hey, Joe, I didn't mean to order Wingspan Asia. I didn't realize I was getting it in the box. And so that type of customer service, we have to kind of keep an eye on that. If, if, if enough people are being confused about that sort of thing, um, we might need to not consider in the future. However, it is something that we'll still consider uh, because in terms of shipping optimization, if if a reprint of the nesting box happens to align with uh, the next expansion in, say, 2024, it's something that we'll, we will very, at the very least, consider doing that. 
but we are for sure not packing Wingspan Asia inside any future printings of the nesting box. Uh, Dave says that he got his copies of Verdant, Calico, and Cascadia, all from the same designer, I believe. Any favorites among those? Um, I haven't played Verdant. Um, I wanted to like Calico, and it just didn't hit home for me. A little bit too tight. And Cascadia, I really enjoy. I haven't played it in a little while, but I really enjoy Cascadia. Zhao Feng says, uh, congratulations on the Wingspan launch. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think the launch is going well so far in terms of the fulfillment part of it, at least. I did write several articles, kind of post-mortem articles about Wingspan Nesting Box in particular, and our uh, hesitancy for a long time now to accept pre-orders for products that haven't arrived at our fulfillment centers yet. That's a, a method that we have not used for a long time. We have only waited for products to actually arrive at our fulfillment centers before we've accepted pre-orders. And essentially by then, they are essentially orders, even though they take longer than a normal order to ship. Hence why we call them, why we have called them pre-orders in the past. But we're realizing, thanks to all the feedback that we got about the nesting box, that there are people out there who would prefer, once we even do a very soft, minor announcement of a product, that they would prefer to, um, to pay for it and forget about it until it actually arrives, even if that arrival is months later, even if that element is very uncertain. We don't know exactly when it's going to arrive. And so that is a method we're considering for future products that we are considering for the, the third printing of the nesting box as well. So that's been an interesting conversation to explore on the blog over the last few days. My chocolate of the day today, quite randomly, is from a local chocolate place called Cacao in St. Louis. These are uh, milk chocolate with toasted Missouri pecans. This is extremely addictive chocolate. It is really, really tasty. Once I open this pack, it is dangerous as to how fast I will go through this chocolate. It's really, really good locally made, locally sourced chocolate here in St. Louis um, that I love. It's a place called Cacao. So if you're in St. Louis, I highly recommend checking out Cacao. The final farmer's market or like weekly farmer's market of the season was this past Saturday. And so we went by there and, st and stocked up. But they do have a storefront, I believe, in Maplewood in here in St. Louis. And they also have an online store. What is your, what is your chocolate or, or your treat of the day? Curious how you are indulging, if, any, in, if in anything today. Chris says, are you able to say which company designer you are working with for the tapestry game insert organizer that will fit the base game and the expansions? Um... Um, I'm not quite ready to say that yet, Chris. I, I, I am saying, I mean, yeah, I'm not, not quite ready to say that yet. I, I have said, the thing that I've said publicly is that instead of making a big box for Tapestry, we realized that the box for Tapestry, the original box, is big enough, and we just need an organizer that is designed to hold all Tapestry components, um, including the third expansion. And so we are working with a, a, an organizer company to, to create that insert, and it should be ready for order in the next few months. Like they're, they're working fairly quickly on it. So um, I'll announce it when I announce it, but I'm not quite there yet, Chris. I appreciate you asking about it, though. Chad says that he just backed Unconscious Mind yesterday. So stoked for that one. Thoughts on it? I love this new theme. I think the theme is brilliant. Um, the mechanisms also look brilliant. My, the only reason I haven't backed it yet is that it definitely looks like a game that is heavier than a game that I would usually play. Um, I do, I, I, I like to give heavier games a try ever since I played Ark Nova. Um, Ark Nova is definitely the heaviest game that I truly love. But it, I, I don't know, it's pushing those boundaries for me, Unconscious Mind, it looks like it. So I'm very curious, but, um, but maybe not backer level curious. Maybe I'll try it when it comes out curious uh, to see if it is uh, the type of heavy game that flows the way a medium weight game flows, basically. But has like the depth of decision space of a really heavy game. Dan says, uh, now that the nesting box is here, would you do no box expansions in the future? No box expansions. So Dan's talking about, so yeah, Dan, this is something we think about for, for every expansion that we make. And that's actually on topic with something I want to mention today. Um, the key for any expansion is that from the point where we manufacture it, that we can get it to you, whether it's through our web store or through retailers, that we can get it to you without damaging any of the components. And that's generally why we use boxes. We are experimenting with uh, using envelopes, like uh, they look like cardboard courier envelopes, um, where you can just recycle the whole envelope after you you put the expansion in it. We're experimenting with that, but um, and other methods too. We're experimenting with other methods, but the key is that we need to protect the game. We need to protect the expansion to get it to you. So uh, many times that means that we have to put it in a box. That's that's the best way to do it. 
However, I have been talking to our, um, our manufacturer a lot about this, and I learned something very recently, and I even have some samples here that look like normal expansion boxes, right? Here's uh, Wingspan European, here's Invaders from Afar from Scythe, and here is the Scythe Wind Gambit. Regular looking boxes. They feel regular, they look great. The difference is, and you can maybe see one of the differences I'm holding this up, the difference is, is, that, is that these are varnished instead of, and let me get the right term here, they're not, um, they're not coated. So many game boxes, as I very recently learned, are coated in a little bit of plastic. Um, and this seals, that kind of seals the box. It makes it feel super fancy. And this is kind of standard across most game boxes. But if you ask your manufacturer to not do that, to not coat it and instead varnish it, it means that the box can be recycled. And I think that is crucially important. I did not know that. I thought expansion boxes could simply be recycled, but that is not true if they have that coating on it. That it's a, it, you can't, it doesn't feel like plastic, but on a very micro level, it is plastic. So I didn't, I didn't realize that. My manufacturer looked into it, and now I know that we are going to start making all of our expansion boxes in this varnished uh, uh, for, format instead, so that when you get that expansion box, everything is protected inside, but you can then recycle the box um, and actually have it be recycled, unlike the other boxes that have a little bit of plastic in them. I didn't know that. So that was that was good for me to know and um, and something for us to to change moving forward with all of our expansion boxes. Big Dan is here. He says he finally got and played Smitten. Um, his husband and him love it. What a slick and beautiful game. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. I really, really appreciate that. I put a lot of love into this little game and I don't usually design little games like that. So I'm glad to hear that you're having fun with it. Really happy to hear that. William's here. Hey, William. Good to hear from you. Uh, William was one of the amazing design day attendees that I got to meet uh, about a month ago now. William says, have you read the book, Your Move? What Board Games Teach Us About Life? He says, I found it to be a philosophical defense for board games and a deeper exploration of why we love them. And you might find some interesting insights about some games that you know. Um, I have not, I don't think I've heard of that book, William, but I appreciate the recommendation and I am going to add it to, uh, I'm going to add it to my little wish list right now. So I don't forget about it. Yeah, thank you for the recommendation. That's awesome. Andrew says, have I seen anything about the upcoming two-player Star Wars deck building game? I did watch a video that I think talked about, or maybe I read an article on, on Dicebreaker about what, what we knew about it so far. He says, not sure if you're a Star Wars fan. I am a huge Star Wars fan, but curious if your opinion of it or if you're looking forward to it. So that's the thing. I'm a huge Star Wars fan, um, and I looked into it. I, the article that I read, it, it, I don't know. It... It didn't make me super excited to get the game. Nothing against the game. I mean, it was very superficial reaction. But the things that I read about it, I was like, I don't know if this is a game that I actually get to the table because I don't play a lot of really deep uh, two-player competitive games. Um, Megan and I do play games competitively. We also play games cooperatively. But that there was something about it. I mean, I'll have to go back and read the article. But something about it, I was like, I don't know if we'll actually get this to the table um, as much as I love the Star Wars theme within it. Um, I am, though, really enjoying the Andor show on Disney Plus right now. Like, really, really enjoying it. I think we've watched, we're, we're caught up through all nine episodes so far. So, I'm really enjoying that part of it. And I, I, I definitely am open to learning more about the, the, the deck building game to see if it, um, if it ends up being something that, that I'm curious to try. We'll see. Tom says, now that the carnage of Nest Week was hopefully settled, what was your feeling about the Nesting Box release? I've seen nothing but good reviews from people. I'm, I'm happy. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely happy that people have received it already. Some people have received it and, and are happy with the organizational structure of the box. Um, I, th I certainly think there are things that we'll learn about the box as we move forward, about how different ways that people organize it. Um, we'll learn more as we have new expansions come out to see how people fit the, that new content inside. Fortunately, there's plenty of room inside for, for cards. I think there's like five different places where you can put cards uh, in, in the box. So there's, there's plenty of room for cards in the long run. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. I, I, I wish we had made enough for everyone in the first printing, but I also know that we're the type of company that doesn't create artificial scarcity or exclusives. If there's interest in a product, we will make more of it. It'll just take a little bit of time. Sasha says that I, he says, you know already that the price will be at Foreland or what price will be in the reprint by Stonemaier? Will it be cheaper to buy over Foreland because of tax and shipping? Uh, Foreland is not involved in, in the reprint there, there, I, I guess what you're saying is they were one of the companies or were they there, there are several companies, localization partners that bought into the second printing. This is the printing that we started around six months or four, three months ago. 
And Forland isn't one of them. I'm seeing Surfing Meeple, Wanted Games, Korea Board Games, Matago, Grok, Genos, Maldito, Delta Vision, and Mindoc. I'm not seeing, this is the list on our website. I'm not seeing Forland on that website. But if you are looking to get the nesting box with Wingspan Asia in another language inside of it, um, that's something that some of our partners are doing. You can look on the nesting box page for the full list of, of those companies. Shen Wei is happy with the speedy delivery. Ooh, looks like I'm falling behind on questions. I'll focus on questions for a minute. Um, Daniel says, for the issues related to getting the nesting box and Wingspan Asia separately, I assume the image only had the nesting box. Yep, that's, that's correct. The image only had the nesting box. Well, actually, that's not entirely true. The, it had the nesting box, but I think some of the sub images had uh, had Wingspan Asia components in them, but not in the main product product image. You're right about that. But what I mean, above the product image is the title, what says nesting box with Wingspan Asia inside. Ryan says, now that it's been out a few months, how have you felt that Wingspan, that Viticulture World, not Wingspan, Viticulture World has been accepted? How has it sold compared to expectations? Has Viticulture World influenced any future decisions of turning non-co-op games into cooperative games? You know, I wish the only variable in play here was uh, cooperative versus non-cooperative, and then I would have some great information about that. But unfortunately, we have the variable about the 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 uh, the conquistadors that were that shouldn't have been in the game that were in the game that I think turned people some some people off from the very beginning, even though we replaced those cards. Um, there's also the difficulty conversation. Viticulture World is a difficult expansion to the point that we added a promo pack at the last minute that helps with that difficulty. It is that difficult. Let's look to see what the rating is on Board Game Geek right now. Viticulture World. Not that the rating is everything, but it does impact some things. This is 7.9, so very well received among people who have, have played it. So I think it scratches a unique itch. It scratches an itch of people who really enjoy difficult cooperative games. And they're, uh, that, that, that's a, a fairly big population of people, if, I, if, uh, if I'm correct in, in assuming that in, in my perception of it. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it's something that I would aggressively pursue in the future, but uh, but if it's the right fit for a game, it's something that we might explore. It was interesting to hear the amount of people who, once we announced it, I was so excited to announce it, and the, and the number of people who immediately said, I play this game competitively. I see this as a competitive game. I'm not interested in a cooperative version of it, um, despite the, the sheer number of, of Viticulture fans worldwide. So I would say it has not sold quite as well as I'd hope. I'll, I'll be honest and say that. Uh, but it has sold well. I'm happy for the designers. I'm really proud of the work they put into it, the time and effort. They put a ton of work into it. And I hope people continue to consider it and talk about it. We'll continue to send out review copies to make sure it's part of the general conversation. Kenneth says, are we going to have an expansion for Libertalia soon? There is no expansion for Libertalia on our progress chart at this point in time. No. Sasha says, I should try Tricarian. I have tried Tricarian. I, I've played a few games of it. I should have a video about it on our on our YouTube channel. Nathan says, because Wingspan Asia is a standalone version of Wingspan, would you consider a new realm uh, for Rolling Realms? I thought about it a little bit, but it's still Wingspan. It's still Wingspan, the game. So uh, I don't think we're going to do a realm for, for Wingspan Asia. Melissa says that they need the Tapestry Organizer. Uh, I have not bought... Any because I had the tapestry, the landmark bases, and none, none seem to fit. We are designing the um, the the uh, organizer, the box organizer for tapestry, to include uh, those who put the the base snaps on. Um, not base snaps that we make, but other people make base snaps for the landmarks and tapestry. We are making sure that they fit inside the box. So that's definitely part of the consideration, Melissa. Yeah. Tony says, next year's April Fool's product should be a Stomeyer steamer trunk to hold all the Stomeyer games and big boxes. That would be a massive trunk. Chad, uh, let's see. Nancy Jane says, varnish is recyclable. Yeah, that surprised me too. The term varnish, I I don't exactly know what it is. It's just a, it's basically, I believe, a non-plastic coating. Um, I don't think it's the type of varnish that we think of putting on like wood stains. Um but yeah, it, it's a, a varnish versus versus plastic coating. Mark says, as Euphoria Ignorance is Bliss, will, will the Ign Euphoria Ignorance is Bliss expansion be reprinted soon? We currently don't have any plans for it. Let's have, uh, we'll, we'll look at this. How many back in stock requests have we received for the, uh, the Euphoria Ignorance is Bliss? I'll search here for the word ignorance. Hmm, I must be looking at the wrong thing. I will get that updated. 
Uh, yeah, I think there's a there's a filter right now on our web store um, for the nesting box. So I don't know offhand. I don't we, we don't I I don't think we have enough back in, back in stock requests to do that yet. Yeah. Michael says it looks like George got his shipping notification as during the live stream right now. Michael says have, have you ever gone to the Star Wars land at Disney Park or considered the Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel? Michael, I am so excited to do that someday. I've not done it. Um, I don't really, I'm not someone who really gets excited about, about Disney World in general. Um, I don't get excited about crowds and all the logistics of actually getting there. But Star Wars, I would love to Im immerse myself in the Star Wars world for a few days. It is definitely on my bucket list to do the Galactic Star Cruiser. I kind of want to wait until, until we really, really figure out COVID. Um, obviously, I'm vaccinated. I'm boosted. I wear masks everywhere. But I, I would love to get to the point where I don't have to wear a mask for, for three days straight at at uh, at Star Wars. And this is this is a personal choice, not a mandate from Disney at all. Um, I, I wear masks in any public space, any indoor public space right now. So, um, yeah, I, I am so excited to do it someday. I'm just kind of waiting for the right time in relation to COVID to do that. Chad says he's addicted to Marvel Snap. Uh, I've been hearing a lot of board game uh, designers and, and content creators talk about Marvel Snap, which is really exciting to me. I would love to hear more board game uh, content creator perspectives on digital games that kind of feel like tabletop games. And I, I like I, the Dice Tower does it quite a bit with uh, with certain digital games, but I love that they did a, a wonderful discussion about Marvel Snap recently. Let's see. Sasha says, Fewerland will sell the retail box. Well, will they? I, I don't know for sure if they will, Sasha. I, I guess you're probably hearing that from Fewerland. I don't have that on my list. Maybe this is something that I don't know. Um, I don't determine their pricing. All, all we, if we are selling Fewerland some nesting boxes, it'll be, uh, it'll be at a specific price for Fewerland and then for Lent, and then they will decide how much they want to sell it for. So I don't know how, how compared to our price. Nathan's reading uh, a book that I recommended a while ago called Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. And I'm glad that you're really enjoying it. it. It is a fascinating book to read. If you're looking for kind of a thinky sci-fi book about what it would look like if um, the, the sentient slash sapient beings on a planet were not human, they were another species, uh, it's, a, it's a fascinating read. And Adrian, I, I believe, is a, an avid board gamer. Interesting. Paul says that there's at least one negative review of the nesting box. He says one UK reviewer really seems to have an issue with Stillmire Games. Some of his recent comments bordered on malicious. That's unfortunate, Paul. But uh, I mean, everyone's welcome to their opinion, and uh, hopefully that opinion comes from a place of of uh, I don't know. I don't know where it comes from. Sorry to hear that. That's unfortunate. Daniel says, when it comes to user testing, you'd be surprised what people would do when viewing a web page. I have learned to accept that this is inevitable. All that is to say that as silly as it sounds, the main product image needs to show the full contents. Um, I think that's fair, Daniel. Um, I think that is a perspective. I, but like if you look on, on many product listings, they show the box. They don't show like every single component in the main, in the main, uh, in the main uh, product image. So uh, I, I see what you're saying. Maybe there's a different way that we could have clarified it, like put a little ribbon on there to say nesty box. And then within the image somewhere, we could say with Wingspan Asia inside, I totally hear that. That, that would be a, a different way, a better way for us to do that in the future. And actually we're doing the opposite for the image that we're using for the nesting box that doesn't have Wingspan Asia inside. Uh, we're put, we're, we have the nesting box and then there's a little banner on the image itself. It's part of the image that says Wingspan Asia not included to make that very clear to people. Jen Wei says, what do I think about people giving ranking of games of the year even before it hits crowdfunding? That's a little odd, I think. Um, I mean, prototypes these days can be very, very nice. You can make a prototype that is essentially the same as the final version of the game. Um, so I, I, if you have a copy of the game that is that is essentially the same, but I guess the odd thing is to talk, to put games on the a top ten list of the year where the game hasn't even been released yet feels a little odd to me. At the same time, on the reverse side, uh, games are released at different times in different places, and so I know last year I had my copy of Ark Nova uh, 
It was a gift from the publisher. I had a copy of Arc Nova in uh, December, I think, maybe November. And so I, I believe I put it on my top 10 list of last year, even though most people didn't have it yet. And now it's probably going to appear on many people's top 10 list this year as a release this year. So games can be released at different times. Also, people are discovering games at different times. So I always feel weird when I get to my top 10 list at the end of the year. And I want to talk about a game that was released like five years ago that I played for the first time this year. Like, where do you talk about those games? That, that's always kind of an, a little weird. And maybe I need to do... Uh, a top 10 or two top 10 lists at the end of the year, one top 10 list for uh, games released that year, or very close to that year, and another list of games that I played for the first time that year. Do two of those lists or combine them into the same video. In fact, I might make a note about that now. Top 10 games released this year and top 10 played for the first time. Make a note about that for my end of year list. Tom says, is there any place I can buy Formaggio Arboriculture and the Mafia expansion for Tuscany? There is a place you can buy Formaggio and Arboriculture. You can buy them from um, uh, uh, Print and Play Productions. They, they are the company that we've authorized to print those expansions on demand. The Mafia expansion is just a few cards. It's uh, a free print and play from our website, but there's no place to actually buy it. I don't even know if I'd fully recommend it, but you can play it and let me know what you think. Uh, Nathan says that he read, so there's a, a book, a series of books called Scythe that have nothing to do with our Scythe. And uh, Nathan said that he read the first book recently. It's an interesting series. It's about a world where people have basically figured out every cure to every disease and death is not a thing anymore unless you are killed or murdered. And even crime is, is very little. And so, I don't know, it's a little dark, but the, the book presents another way that you can have people to have population control in a way um, to, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to misstate the book, but it's an interesting premise and I enjoyed reading the trilogy as well. Um, it's a little dark at times, but I did enjoy it. What else do we have on top of it? So I, some games that I played in the last week, I played two more games of Betrayal Legacy. You can see a fun photo on Instagram at Jamie Stegmaier if you'd like of us playing Betrayal Legacy uh, via candlelight under candlelight which is a really fun way to play recently this past weekend we did sessions three and four i also played space base on board game arena last wednesday which was a nice way to, to wind down at the end of the day um i want to mention this to you if you're watching this if you think that you have subscribed to the stillmeyer games e-newsletter but you haven't actually gotten an e-newsletter in a while please go to our website and subscribe again we found a little glitch recently that's a little frustrating and we there isn't really a way around it, unfortunately, which is uh, when we integrated MailChimp with Shopify, the e-commerce system that we used back in February, the systems got a little bit confused and it appears that some people who on Shopify uh, decided not to opt into e-commerce, anything other than a shipping notification, basically, an order specific notification, that that message was carried over to MailChimp as an unsubscribe. And we can't undo that on our end. We can't. I, I think uh, th that's a good thing that we can't undo it uh, in all cases other than this. Um, because, you know, if you choose to unsubscribe, a company shouldn't be able to manually then resubscribe you. Anyway, it's a glitch. It's not for everybody at all. I think I think many people are still getting those monthly e-newsletters. But for some reason, if you think you should be getting those monthly e-newsletters and you aren't, uh, the solution is for you to go to our, and I'm sorry for the inconvenience, but the only way is for you to do this. I can't do it myself. Uh, to go to our the, the news section of our website, click on the subscribe to the newsletter. And even if you already have, uh, even if you already think that you've subscribed, just enter your email and resubscribe. It is possible you'll then get a notification saying that uh, that email is already in the system. And that should be good news. That should mean, mean that you are already on the monthly e-newsletter. Just to let you know if, if, if you are one of those people that, that have been missing out on e-newsletters for some reason. And this is the primary monthly e-newsletter that I'm talking about. So a few people are agreeing. All right, Carol says, uh, she says, definitely agree on doing doing two top 10 lists for released and new to me list. I do that for myself and I've seen others do that. One also variant that I did a few years ago is that there was a year where there were so many new editions of games released that I really enjoyed that I did a full top 10 list 
of new editions of existing games, and then a separate top 10 list of completely new games released that year. Um, that might even happen again this year. It seems like we're seeing a lot more new additions than entirely new products. Chad says, in the age of Amazon shopping, we have all purchased something that we haven't fully read in the description. I appreciate that some of our games are completely transparent about the contents of the box. If anything, it's a lesson as a buyer to fully read the description. Um, but I, I totally agree with that, Chad. I also agree with the sentiment that we need to make everything on the product page as clear as possible for people so it isn't potentially confusing. Tom says, but Betrayal Legacy is his second favorite legacy game, and the first is Charterstone. I'm honored to hear that. Very two different uh, legacy experiences there, both somewhat competitive. Um, and actually, they both have a little bit of semi-cooperative elements to it as well. That's, I, I'm honored to hear that, Tom. Thank you for sharing. Mark says, what advice can you give to someone who has made board game, who has made board games into a serious hobby, but is about to throw that hobby away? That's interesting. Um, hopefully, hopefully this isn't you, Mark. Maybe this is a friend of yours who got really into board games and then decided, I no longer really want this to be my hobby. Honestly, I respect that. I, I hope that the, the, the reasons that they're deciding to move on aren't something that could have been prevented, uh, like, like bullying or harassment or exclusion or anything like that. Um, but you know, our hobbies change. I used to play soccer every week and I still love soccer. I still probably would play soccer, but my sports have changed or my outdoor activities are now primarily, uh, disc golf. And for a while it was rock climbing. Hobbies change over time. The thing about board games is that we have like collections of them. We, we collect these things. And when you're done playing, then you have all these games that, that you know, that you have nothing to do with. Uh, and I, I know that if someday I doubt this will happen, but if someday I'm like, you know, I just don't see myself playing board games anymore, I would try to find loving, caring homes for those games, people who actually want the games and want to play them. So that would be my prerogative if I was going to leave the hobby. What do other people think about that? That's, that's an interesting question. Do you, have you ever thought about that? Have you, do you know someone who's, who's ever uh, just decided I'm, I'm done playing games? I, 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 and what did they do with their collection? Did they sell it off? Did they give it away? Maximus says, have you considered expanding any of your game IPs beyond uh, beyond Rolling Realms? For example, a Wingspan style version of Scythe or a Viticulture style, style version of Wingspan. So expanding the brand, the brands in that uh, in that way. It's an interesting question. Um, I haven't. I think, uh, or maybe I have a little bit. I, I've, I, I like, that's an interesting question. I, I don't think I exactly have done that. I, I have looked at some of our brands and been like, are there other approaches to this brand or this uh, this familiar mechanical thing that this game has, uh, could that work with with some other theme? But not, I usually don't go to one of our other brands with that. I usually try to keep them separate. Hilda says, you'd love Galaxy's Edge here in Orlando as a Star Wars fan. The two rides in the designated land are really immersive experiences. Yeah, I want to do the rides. I want to do, I'm not even a role player in general, but I want to do the role playing thing. I want to do the full immersion thing. I want to feel like I'm in the Star Wars world for a few days. Uh, I would love to do that. Have you done that, Hilda? Or have you just done kind of the uh, go to the park for a few days thing? Top says, any news on a Red Rising expansion? The news so far is that we are waiting for the, we're still waiting for the sixth book to be released. I think there is a release date now. I've pre-ordered it, I believe, on Amazon. And once we get to read that book, we'll decide what we're going to do next. I think at this point, what we'll probably most likely do is just add some new characters I, I, or, or new versions of characters, something like that. I don't think it'll be a big, robust thing that we do. And part of that is based on um, where I've seen the Red Rising game brand going. Uh, we sold a lot of copies for a few months, and then that has definitely changed. I've seen it been deeply discounted, things like that. I still know that some people love the game, and, and I'm happy that people are enjoying it. I love the game, too. But uh, but I don't see us kind of going all out at this point based on the reception to the game. Michael says we're going to Galaxy's Edge on the 17th for Life Day. We're going to cosplay a little bit and hand out Life Day tokens to the cast members. That's really cool, Michael. Yeah, I'm curious to, he to hear how that goes. Craig says, did you expect the nesting box to sell out so quickly? And if you did, when did you realize? Did you see this experience changing anything going forward in new game expansion launches? There's a big answer to that question. And the answer is yes, Craig. Or, or yes, we are considering some changes. And I'd recommend reading the last two articles on the Stillmire Games blog, because I talk about that quite a bit in those two articles. Um, the short answer is uh, I did not expect it to sell that quickly. If I knew it was going to sell it in six hours, I would have made more copies. But I really didn't know. 
Um, at the time where we entered production, we had around 8,000 people say that they were interested in maybe buying the nesting box. But as anyone knows, I think he was who looks at like launches for any product, the number of people who say they're interested is typically very different than the number of people who actually are gonna spend money, especially spend $100 on a product. So uh, I considered that data, but I also didn't think that literally 8,000 people were gonna actually buy the nesting box. And as it turns out, we, we made 10,000 and we sold 10,000 of them very quickly. So it was, it was, uh, a learning, I don't know, it was, it was, I would say a little disappointing to me that I, that I didn't have enough. I, I definitely would have made more if I could have. However, uh, we can't undo making a product that we've made too many of, especially a very expensive product like that. If we had made way too many nesting boxes, that would be a big problem too, and probably a bigger problem because we can always make more of a product. And fortunately, we already had a reprint in progress, a small reprint. And after that reprint, if we sell through that one, we will gather pre-orders for another bigger printing that will be available in around six months. Tom says he would love just more characters for Red Rising and more cards. Uh, he's, it says he's actually excited that it wouldn't be more complicated. That's, that's great to know, Tom. Um, I appreciate you being open to that possibility. Carol says, I have a friend who, who sorry, that's sort of scrolling past. I have a friend who has pretty much stopped buying games because he is in the having two little kids stages of his life. He got, gets into board games. He gets his board game news from her. I'd say that this hobby... I'd say I see this hobby going on hiatus for people more than completely getting rid of collections. That's a great point, Carol. And this is actually delves into a topic that we've been discussing a little bit of, of saturation. Um, like at what point do you feel like your collection is? And here's a few. Here's a, like I might put this on our annual demographic survey. Here's a few that I wrote down. Which phase of the hobby are you in? Um, and let me know if there's any stages that I'm missing here. Are you in the collecting amassing stage of the hobby? Are you in the refining enhancing stage of your hobby? Are you in the saturation completion stage or are you in the downsizing culling stage? Are there any stages that you would add to that list? I'm kind of coming up with a poll question uh, on the fly right now. Let me know if you have any suggestions for that. And Carol, I'm wondering if you're, the one that you mentioned there is, fits in any of those, the phase where you're kind of focused on other things for a little while, like kids or another hobby, another activity, but you're kind of letting it sit. That might fit into saturation completion, might also fit into downsizing culling. Let me know if you think that fits, a, if that deserves a, a new category of its own too. Xiaofeng says, hobbies do change, but I do believe that what board games can do uh, conceptually is expanding in terms of experience, frame of winning, narrative, and arguments, um, sorry, it's scrolling, and arguments made through the game design. I, I found it very interesting, I found some very interesting, some games and projects discussed in the Beyond Solitaire podcast. Thank you for recommending that podcast. Nathan says, I knew a guy who would go all in on a hobby for a few years, a few years and then sell, out all the, sell all the stuff for that hobby to fund the next one. You know, I've heard of a few people doing that. I have a friend who kind of does that where he goes, he just gets really passionate about one specific thing, like baking bread or beekeeping. And he'll go all in for that. And then he'll feel like he's gotten his full experience from it and he'll move on to a new hobby, which I think is cool. It's not, that's not how, how I typically do things, but I think it's cool that some people do that. Um, yeah. My video this past weekend was about, and this ties into a question that I saw a few minutes ago about, it was about my favorite worlds and, and game series. So series of games that kind of are strung together by some common theme or mechanism. Uh, my favorite worlds, games that share the same world. It was a fun video to film, um, and I picked my favorite game from each of my favorite series for that, for that top 10 list. So that, that was that video from this past weekend. Uh, daylight saving was this past weekend in the U.S., so we got an extra hour of, of sleep uh, before playing disc golf on Sunday. Curious, I know in every, different places in the world, different states do it differently, but what, what did you do with your extra time? Did you stay up late or did you sleep in? How did you use that extra hour? Or how do you plan on using that extra hour um, if you do get one in the near future? Also had an incredible playtest of a game uh, that's in the works of still our games yesterday. And uh, yeah, last night, Megan, Megan was nice to playtest a game with me, and I, I was... I'm just delighted with how this game is coming along. Um, definitely still in the play, play test stage. Uh, we, we've done some blind play testing for it, but uh, it, it's, it's coming along really well. Just want to let you know some excitement about a play test that, that, uh, that we did yesterday. And also yesterday in the U.S. was Election Day. I, I, Megan and I both voted early, um, which I, I love that there are different options to vote. That You can go to the polls early sometimes. You can go on the day of. You can, can mail it in. I love having those options, especially with the pandemic and, and with uh, 
sometimes very long lines at the polls. I, I, I love that we have the option to, uh, to vote in different ways. George says he's in the face of keeping all of his games in shrink wrap and getting enjoyment from them there. Who needs to play them? Yeah, that's really is the, kind of the collection phase, I think, George. Just immersing yourself in that collection. Dennis also had a question about the Euphoria expansion. Will it get a reprint? Uh, maybe. We are still kind of gauging interest on that. So I'm, I'm definitely open to reprinting it, but I have not seen enough interest yet in reprinting it to, to justify... Oh, here we go. Joe fixed the filter. I can actually search for now. Thank you, Joe, for paying attention to this live. Let's see. We have 226 people have requested a back and stock notification for Ignorance is Bliss. A sizable number of people. It's a decent number. Um, we need to make a minimum of 1,500 of them, though. So that's not to say that I'm going to wait for 1,500 back and stock notifications, but probably 500. 500, 400, 500, I would, I would like to see. I would like to know for sure that we could sell through that the quantity. And part of that might also come from retailers and distributors. We might do that as well. Just wait for them to, to see what they what they want, how many they their uh, requests they're getting from, how many requests distributors are getting from retailers, that type of thing. Let's see. Nancy says she loves early voting. Zhao Fang says uh, his kids played more in the morning and he slept in. Chad says learning about, loves hearing about playtesting. Tom says, do I, do I make people sign a non-disclosure agreement for playtesting? And has anyone ever broken that? I don't do that. I don't, I don't really like NDAs. Um, it feels so impersonal. Um, I, so, but I do ask playtesters. I, I tell them, I ask them, I, I, I talk to the lead playtesters. I say, please make it very, please don't talk about this outside of the playtest group. And please let everyone know in the playtest group that they are not to talk about it outside of that group. There have been a few uh, times where uh, that wasn't communicated as clearly as possible. And someone within that group started talking about it on BoardGameGeek or on social media. Very rare, but it has happened a few times. It was frustrating when that happened, but it happens. Um, and I just kind of didn't work with that lead play, lead play tester again. So, but it hasn't happened in so long that we truly have a fantastic group of lead play testers who do those blind or unguided play tests with their groups. And they're, they're very good at communicating that ele element of confidentiality with their play testers. And really even play testers are very good at not talking about, um, like I know they get excited because they have information that people don't have. And then when I start to talk about the game, I think they're eager to talk about it as well, but they're very good at understanding that the version that they played even in a later playtest stage, may have changed a little bit to the final version of the game. And the final components of the game can really impact how a game is, is actually played in your experience at the table. So I appreciate those playtesters waiting until they've actually played the final version of the game, the final printed published version of the game, before they openly talk about it. Carol says, I think it's more of a just a pause and playing what he has versus one of those categories. So yeah, I'll add uh, on pause. On pause on pause or hold. Yeah, I like that category. Thank you, Carol, for, for mentioning that category. Zhao Feng says, on the foodie side, I highly recommend doing crepes with horchata. I do love the horchata. I, I don't know if I've ho had horchata powder specifically, as you mentioned here, but I, I love having the drink horchata or having that, that um, horchata mix or milk used in a, in a latte, things like that. But I haven't had a crepe with it, so I'll have to try that. Thanks for that recommendation. Chris says he's been 3D printing out tile holders for his Settlers of Catan game in his public library. Yeah, Chris, I think you've talked a little bit about how you, you're so excited that you can 3D print at your library now. And I think that's awesome. That's really, really cool. I'm looking to see if I've missed any topics today. I've got the chocolate covered, got the, the boxes that I wanted to talk about, uh, shipping updates. If there's any, if you're tuning in late and you have any questions, feel free to ask. Don't be worried if I've already answered the question. I know that you chime in at different times. So let me, let me know if you have any other questions for me to cover in the last 10 minutes. Shawnee says, I'm in the slowly building his collection stage, maybe five new games per year and culling two to three per year. Also for daylight saving, I split 30 minutes earlier bedtime and 30 minutes late up, waking up. I love that. I love that idea of staying up a little bit later and then sleeping in a little bit, but not going all in one way or the other. I like that a lot. Andrew says he's loving the nesting box and the new card abilities on the new cards in Wingspan Asia. Thanks to all who worked on the box and the expansion. Uh, thanks, Andrew. I really appreciate that positivity. Um, I also appreciate uh, constructive criticism about the box. I'm totally open to that. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you're happy with it. Thank you for sharing that. 
Carol says that she loves playtesting for people. It's so cool seeing a game evolve. Yeah, that's one of the fun, fun things about playtesting, that as long as you understand that the game is going to change quite a bit and what you're playing is a prototype and probably doesn't have real graphic design or anything like that in it. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a fun process to be a part of. Chad says, because he, Chad is moving right now, he says, I've had very little time to design his game. Have you experienced this when you last moved? Any suggestions to keep his eye on the prize? That's a good question. Like when, when you're in a time of your life where you're designing something or you're, you're cr passionate about some creative project, and but something else bumps into your life and you can't really focus on that on that creative project right now, uh, how do you kind of keep it on the back of your mind? What I do is... I always have a running list of ideas. So even when I'm taking a break from a game or I can't, I can't work on a game at, at a certain time, I still have that place where I can go to put some ideas down on paper. And some of those ideas have made extremely positive impacts on the game. So kind of separating myself from the full immersion design experience and letting my brain think about other things for a while, focus on other things, can actually, I think, really, really help that design process. It can actually be an asset as long as you have that outlet, that place where you know you can always quickly and easily write down any idea that you have. Um, the other thing that you can do, Chad, especially if you are moving and you maybe need to listen to something while you're moving, is to listen to podcasts about related games. So games with similar mechanisms or themes. That way it's kind of still in the back of your mind. You're, you're processing games that are similar to the game that you're working on. Uh, during that pr process when um, the moving process when when your mind is elsewhere as well I think that might help a little bit let me know if either of those work for you Frank is joining in Frank says congrats on the success of the nesting box it looked like a challenging week but from an outsider perspective you did a great job handling it and uh, 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 sorry as uh, as always um, thanks for sharing lessons on your blog I'm sorry I choked over those words Frank I really appreciate that that just means a lot coming from a, a publisher that I really admire like you so thank you for saying that um, I'm glad to see that the race, race to the Raft campaign is going so well. Julia says that she, uh, her husband is a champion in order the nesting box, but haven't gotten it yet. Can't wait. Yeah, it should. I mean, all I would guess that most champions, if not all champions, who pre-ordered the nesting box because it's pre-packaged will at least get the shipping notification this week. I don't think that will even take till next week. Um, but I... I fulfillment centers are doing orders in different ways. They might be mixing up the nesting box with Wingspan Asia a little bit, but you should get the shipping notification very soon, I think. Tom says, have I ever completely scrapped a game after playtesting feedback? After, I mean, usually when a game gets to the blind playtesting stage, usually it means that I think the game is fun and functional and, and, and we're going to move forward with it. There is one game that hopefully I will famously talk about or infamously talk about someday uh, from a positive perspective, but there's one game that uh, that we went through many stages of blind, blind play testing, and it always kind of got okay responses, but it never got to the point where we loved it or the playtesters loved it enough to publish it. And so we have a game that was designed multiple times that, that just never got there. Yeah. And maybe it will someday because I, I have art for this game too. Dino says, I know you mentioned a little on the limited second printing nesting box pre-order. Do you happen to mention when those pre-orders will go live on the site? I think after lunch today. So in about an hour um, is when I would do. I, I don't want to uh, put it live and then go to lunch right away. I think I want to wait until right after my lunch to make those live uh, when I can actually look at it a little bit. But uh, we're very close. I would say within an hour, you can check our website and you'll see that. You'll also get, you should get a back in stock notification. See, uh, Nathan says, when a game slips off the progress chart, does it just go away or does it go back to behind the scenes development? When it slips off the chart, sometimes it goes away permanently. Usually it means that it's, it's not really moving forward in any way right now, more in a holding pattern. Um, there are various reasons um, for it, but uh, it doesn't mean that we've given up on it. It just means that we really have nothing to report on it and it kind of seems like it's is almost unintentionally misleading by being on the progress chart because it is not actually making any progress. But there are also games uh, on that progress chart that look like they're not making any progress, even though they are, because they're not, the, the the red lights aren't turning into yellow lights or green lights, but they are actually, there, there are things being done for those games and those products. 
Chad says he has a field notes notebook that he's been using to write down those notes on any given moment. That's awesome um, so that you have that handy, Chad. I think one of the, I heard a comedian talk about those recently. He said like the biggest advice he gives to any comedian is have a place to write down those ideas because it can be so excruciating if you have a great idea, a great joke, um, uh, you know, a great mechanism, a great, uh, whatever the, uh, the idea is, and you don't write it down right away, that could be, you know, that could be really harm your creativity, I think. Michael says that his wife, Kay, tried a demo copy of Wingspan Asia at a local event last weekend, and she had a blast. She told me that she loves the duet mode and super excited to have our own copy. I'm glad to hear that, Michael. I hope I know you play a lot of games with your wife and talk about them on our forums, and I, I, I'm excited to hear what you two think about Wingspan Asia, specifically the duet, duet mode, once you get to play it together. Jordan says he just received the Tapestry Plans Employees expansion, and we enjoyed it very much. Big thanks for all of Stomar Games. Thank you, Jordan, for saying that. And... Uh, for everyone who wants a Tapestry expansion but doesn't have one yet, we are making more. We're reprinting both of the expansions. I think, are they both out of print or just one? Let's look that up. I know that Arts and Architecture sold out. I know we're out of those. Where is the other one? We still have Plans Employees. Okay, we have Plans Employees, but we're reprinting both of them, I think, because we're anticipating selling out of Plans Employees around the same time as the, the new expansion comes out. George says, did you make something with a note from last week about bringing more disc golf to the U.S. store? Yes, George. Actually, what I did is I went to our web store and realized that even in the U.S., we're pretty much sold out of all disc. Uh, so we started we started a new order, and I made enough that we can sell uh, send some to our other fulfillment centers around the world. Yeah, so thank you for alerting me to that. They were all, like most of them weren't quite sold out, but like were about to sell out. Chad says he's really looking forward to the Weird Al movie based on Weird Al's life. I actually, uh, I wouldn't say I'm not a fan of Weird Al, but I haven't really followed um, his music or his career all that much. So, uh, I, the, the movie looks awesome for fans, but I don't, I don't really know much about him. I am excited about the new Wakanda Forever movie, though. David says that he's fairly new to the gaming hobby, and his wife and him are currently obsessed with viticulture. That's awesome, David. Thank you for sharing that, and thanks for playing viticulture. And welcome to the hobby. Uh, welcome to the livecast. I love that not only you're in the hobby, but you're chiming in on a, on a board gaming livecast. That's awesome. Uh, Zhao Feng says, I know you're about to leave, so it was nice seeing you live again. I hope your furry ones make it in the final art of the next project. Ah, yeah, that was, uh, that was a little heartbreaking this past week. Um... I discovered that the final art used for the Wingspan Asian uh, player mats, which I thought had my cats hidden in it, that version of the art wasn't used. Um, it was an honest mistake uh, and one that I probably should have caught, but I thought it was kind of hidden behind graphic design. They're very hard to see. It's, it's very cleverly hidden. And so I thought it was kind of hidden behind some graphic design. And so I, I didn't see it and um so yeah it's 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 not there so we'll have to hide my cats in a future expansion instead even though we don't have a player mats in future expansions that i'm aware of william is also a huge weird al fan carol's getting back to work uh, tom says now that uh now that there are so many realms the easiest three realms to use in the first round to get people into and understand rolling realms Ooh, the what are the easiest realms and rolling realms to play in the first round i think wingspan is very easy um Tempted to say My Little Scythe. Tapestry is pretty easy. The Society is pretty easy. Let's, let's pull out those right now. Um, Viticulture is pretty easy. Between Two Cities is very easy. Okay, so I don't know if I have four, but I or three, but I have four. I, I think these are some of the easiest realms. We've got Wingspan, The Society, Viticulture, and Between Two Cities might be four realms to consider to introduce someone to Rolling Realms. Cliff says, uh, just chiming in to say, keep up the great work. Thank you, Cliff, for saying that. I really, I really appreciate that. Hilda says that she hasn't done the Star Cruiser experience at Galaxy's Edge, but uh, still being COVID cautious for certain things. Yeah, that's where I am too. Yeah. William is also excited about Wakanda Forever. And Jody just got her shipping notice. So why don't we end on that note? A positive note that Jody just got her shipping notice. Hopefully you will too if you haven't already. Um, it'll happen within the next few weeks. I would say there's really no cause for concern unless you get no notification in the month of November at all. But we, we've said pretty publicly that, or publicly and throughout the communications, that shipping will take pretty much through all of November for this giant pre-order. So thank you for your patience. I really appreciate that. When your order ships, you will get a shipping notification, I promise. All right. 
I'm going to take off. I'm going to have some lunch. And then after lunch, I am going to put the second printing of the Wingspan nesting box without Wingspan Asia inside. It's just the nesting box. I'll put that on our, um, on our web store. Check it out then. Have a great day. Take care. I'll see you next week. Bye.